One of the most exciting parts of 3D printing has been the evolution of filaments. As someone who loves functional prints, these new properties really allow for a near unlimited variety of applications. Some months ago, IC3D reached out letting me know that they were releasing a new filament called Polyhex that was aimed at being a replacement for polycarbonate. Although I don't print with PC very often, I still remember many years ago trying to get even a simple part to print successfully without warping was a serious struggle. This is why most polycarbonate filaments you see are some form of a blend for easier printing. After seeing polyhex being recommended for things like injection molds or being dishwasher safe, my interest was piqued and I agreed to check it out. In today's video, we will be diving into this filament. We'll take a look at its properties, what's required to print with it, and of course, we will do some printing. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping right in, Polyhex is a copolyester filament made by IC3D in collaboration with the US Army intended to make injection mold prints that are able to withstand hundreds of uses. The product page states that this filament combines the best qualities of polycarbonate with the 3D printing ease of PETG. Which is pretty funny, when I first got this filament I cut off a couple of strands to sort of play around with and I thought that it looked and felt a lot like a PETG. The product page now says high temp PETG, but this was not there when I first received this filament. At the time of testing, there was not a full TDS available, but the quick facts does contain some testing data for this filament. For mold shrinkage, the testing value is between 0.005 and 0.007 of a millimeter per millimeter, which is excellent for high precision parts. Heat deflection temperature is 90 Celsius at 1.82 megapascals, and glass transition temperature is 110 C. Using ASTM D638 for the test method, the tensile strength at yield is 43 megapascals, and elongation at yield is 6%. I like to compare technical data sheets and I was searching for a standard polycarbonate that could put up against the polyhex filament for a comparison, but all of the testing methods I was seeing were using ISO 527 instead of the ASTM D638. The documents on ASTM specifically state that ISO 527 differs in technical content, so it didn't make sense to compare the two. The main takeaways are that polyhex has very low shrinkage, it has a comparable heat deflection to that of polycarbonate, and the tensile strength is a bit lower than polycarbonate. There's also mention of chemical resistance, which with this being a copolyester makes a lot of sense. Both PETG and polycarbonate generally have excellent chemical resistance, which makes them great for some very unique applications. We're using my LDO Voron 2.4 for our testing, which checks all of the boxes for Polyhex's printing requirements. First and foremost, to print with this filament, you need an enclosure. It doesn't require any form of internal heater more than a heated bed can provide, but stable temperatures in your printing environment is a must. Speaking of the bed, this filament likes to print hot, and the recommended bed temperature is between 110 and 120 Celsius. Quite a few printers are actually capped at around 100 Celsius, and I do think that you can get away with that for printing with this filament, but that is the lowest I recommend going. For print surface, we are using a powder coated PEI sheet, which is what I highly recommend. Smooth PEI and Gerolite are also listed for bed surfaces, but if you use Smooth PEI, make sure to put down some glue stick as a release agent. Since this is a copolyester, you run the risk of it bonding to your Smooth PEI, just like what can happen when printing with PETG. For our hot end and extruder, we're using the Stealth Burner Toolhead running a Clockwork 2 extruder and E3D Revo hot end. For the extruder, there's not much as far as requirements go, but I do recommend a direct drive over Bowden if given the option to help with things like stringing and the retractions. Printing temperature range is between 270 and 290 Celsius, which does mean you will need an all metal hot end. For the nozzle, this filament is not abrasive and I just use a standard 0.4 brass nozzle, but I really don't recommend going with brass. Brass is pretty sticky, and if you've printed with enough PETG, you very likely have experienced the filament buildup on the nozzle. Due to this, something like a plated copper or nozzle that has an anti-stick coating on the outside will be a better option. Ideally, this is a filament I recommend drying for a couple of hours before printing with, and if given the option, I would actually print directly from a filament dryer. However, the spool I was sent for testing is a very large 2.5 kilogram roll, which is far too big for any of the dryers that I have here. I ended up just using the 300 millimeter bed of my Voron 2.4 to lay the spool of filament down and dry it out for a bit before I began my printing. 
I also printed out a larger spool holder, which allowed this to feed directly into the printer without having any unnecessary drag. If anybody watching this regularly prints with larger spools, I would love to hear what your drying setup looks like. I really wanted to give this filament its best chance to print well, so I ran off a handful of calibrations. This included pressure advanced tuning, flow rates, temperature towers, and retractions. Through the temperature tower, 280 to 290 seemed like the best range for my setup. The speed you print at will determine whether you need a bit more or less heat, so the final temperature I went with was 290 Celsius. With this being a filament that I would be using for functional applications, also I would rather print a bit hotter and slower generally so that way I get the best possible inner layer adhesion. Running the retraction tests, the results were less stringy than I expected and I ended up going with a 0.8 millimeter retraction distance. I printed out a handful of models including a few molds, a shrunken down but still fairly large piece for vacuum forming a visor, a PCB jig for my beacon probe, and a few classic calibration test prints. Results were pretty good, but not perfect. One issue I ran into early on was inconsistent first layers. This was a bit of a head scratcher for me because I hadn't previously had any issues on this printer with first layers and had already baby stepped the nozzle to compensate for the expansion of the bed printing at that 110 Celsius. Looking closely at the Revo nozzle, I noticed that there was quite a bit of polyhex that had stuck onto the surface. This was causing issue with the nozzle when homing by triggering the Z-stop a fraction of a millimeter too soon. This meant each print was starting a bit further away from the bed than it should have been. I was able to pull some of the buildup away, which corrected this, and I moved forward, but this is why, again, I recommend going with something like a plated copper or alternative coated nozzle. After this, first layers became much smoother, and bed adhesion was awesome. I had no warping, and the parts stuck down great. Extrusion was consistent throughout the parts at my 290 Celsius and the 14 cubic millimeters per second max flow rate that I had set. Filament sticking to the nozzle did cause additional buildup to drop onto my larger print, which did cause some zits throughout the part. The only other thing to talk about was that there was a bit of stringing. With this being a copolyester or high temperature PETG as they call it, I can't say that I'm super surprised. PETG generally is one of the stringier filaments that I've worked with. The stringing that I got from Polyhex was very fine, and most prints had only a few small strands that were really easy to clean up. The stringing was worst on the Autodesk FDM test, but this was some very intense retractions and the last print I ran after having this spool open for a few days. I'm confident that if the filament had been in an active dryer and I had played around with attraction even further, I could have removed some of the stringing. Print-wise, other than really temperatures and needing an enclosure, this filament prints almost exactly like a standard PETG. If you have a good profile and experience printing with standard PETG, I don't think the transition over to polyhex is really going to be that difficult. Although I wouldn't consider this a beginner filament, it has been much easier to print with than the standard polycarbonate that I attempted many years ago. I've had my eyes on a tabletop DIY injection molder for some time now, and if I actually get around to building it, I will definitely be trying it out with a mold made out of polyhex. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions about this filament. If you do have any other questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't know the answer to your questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get those answers for you. If you have any ideas for another application this filament might be good for, let me know. I would love to hear them. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Diana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.